Praise the Lord, Tree of Life Church family. I hope you're having a blessed January, a blessed 24 for 24. We are now entering the last 10 days of our first fruits consecration here at Tree of Life Church. Thank you so much for participating. Only heaven will bear record of the difference that you're making in your life, in your workplace, and in our local assembly. I'm grateful for you. I want to talk to you for a moment today about fasting. And I want to open with a question. Are you hungry enough to fast? Are you hungry enough to fast? Seems, seems like a uh, paradoxical question, and it is. Jesus spoke to us in the Sermon on the Mount, and he said, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It's a filling that comes not from the sweet and savory. It's not a fleshly filling, but it's a spiritual filling. And there are times in our lives that we are drawn into a place of hunger and thirst for the things of God that will cause us to do extraordinary things. And fasting is one of those things. Perhaps you've not done it as a discipline, but you're doing it as part of 24 for 24. So we want to talk about a few key points and a few observations from Scripture today surrounding fasting. I was talking to a friend the other day about this subject and he was kind of asking me, hey, what's, what's the big deal? You know, what's the benefit? How does it all work? And he made this comment. I thought it was applicable and I thought it was comical. He said, every time I try to fast, mid-afternoon comes and I'm just sitting at my desk frustrated and hangry. <laughs> have you been there before? I think we all have. And indeed, when we're fasting, we are provoking our flesh. But that's because we have a mindset of pushing back the food, and we have a mindset of pushing away the drink, perhaps. But what if our fast is less about the focus on our hunger for those things, and it's more about our focus and our hunger on the things of God? This is where everything changes. When we begin to subdue this body of death and bring it into subjection, as Paul says to Corinth, when we begin to think in terms of more of you, God, and less of me, more of your appetite and less of my appetite, more of your kingdom, more of your will. You know, we see examples of fasting, scriptures wrought with them, Old Testament, New Testament, fasting for victory, fasting for wisdom, fasting in times of grief, Nehemiah specifically, fasting for direction, fasting, fasting in times of repentance, a very prevalent fast throughout Scripture. And I will tell you today that these all matter. And these all, every circumstance that I've just mentioned, is altered by a commitment to a fast and a prayer to get the attention of God, to see our flesh subdued. So what can you, what should you, what are you, fasting about during our 24 for 24. You know, the other day I was uh, concluding day two of a fast and truth be told, I wasn't feeling any overwhelming uh, spiritual uh, revival or, or vitality. And I, I, I didn't have any fresh revelation or vision, but there in a conversation right around that 48 hour mark, the spirit of the Lord moved into my day in such a rich way. And I felt his presence just like I do right now. And when I felt his presence, I recognized that he had drawn near to me because I had purpose to draw near to him. How powerful is that? So a few points that I want to share with you. Point number one, there is power in our tearing and in our willingness to see the flesh subdued. I just want to draw that to our attention. I know it seems obvious, but Jesus in Luke 4 and in other, uh, other of the synoptic gospels, they record it. He is led by the Spirit into the wilderness, and there he enters this extended fast. In Luke 4, specifically in verse 14, the scripture says that he returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Friend, I want to encourage you, when you fast and when you pursue the heart of God, you will return to your circumstance, you will return to your workplace, to your family, and you will do so in the power of the Spirit. And who will agree with me that that's exactly what we want, to operate in the power of His Spirit? Amen. So point number two, I I want to share a second point with you. There is a sustenance that comes to our spirit man through fasting. 
the very popular story of Jesus coming into Samaria and encountering the woman of the well. His disciples have gone into the marketplace to buy groceries. When they, ret- uh, when they return to him, they insist that he partake, that he eat. And Jesus says something so powerful. He says, I have meat to eat that you know not of. And he goes on and expounds to say that the meat that he's eating is the will of his father and to do the will of God. Do you know that sustenance that Jesus was receiving was not only sustaining his spirit man, but his flesh as well? And it's the same with you and I. When we're about the Father's business, when we're seeking him, when we've separated ourselves to a consecrated fast, God sustains us. How powerful is that? The third point that I want to call to your attention is, again, another common, common scripture. Jesus tells his disciples when they've run into a circumstance, when they've encountered a spirit that they cannot overcome, he says to, him, to, to them, rather, some things come only by prayer and fasting. I, I don't know what circumstance, what familial relationship, what, what uh, trial, what unanswered question that you've been wrestling with, but friend, I, I want to encourage you and I want to tell you that some things come only by prayer and by fasting. So how do we overcome this hangry flesh? I would encourage you as you're fasting, and maybe you're fasting from uh, carnal conduits. I'll just, I'll just phrase it that way anyway, and maybe it's less about pushing away the plate. But in any case, let me stress how important that is to shut down the media, to shut down the entertainment, to, sh- to cut off and shut down all of the, the voices of, of concern and of woe and of conspiracy and negativity, whatever the case may be. And when you feel that familiar hunger pang, if you will, or when you feel that frustration that comes from any type of fast, turn it to praise. Lord, I give you glory. Lord, everything I do today, I'm doing it in your name. Lord, I'm donning the whole armor of Christ today. Lord, I thank you for salvation. Take that petition to him again, and don't be afraid to take it to him over and over, that you're trusting him for a different outcome, to turn to a testimony. And when we do these things, we see our flesh subdued. Draw me nearer, Lord. My hope is in you. I thank you, Lord, for changing the trajectory of my circumstance. I thank you, Lord, for ordering my children's steps. This is how we overcome that hangry flesh. So in closing, I'll leave you with one final thought, autophagy. If you're not familiar with the word, this is your physical body's natural way of regenerating new cells and shedding old cells. Our spirit man needs to experience autophagy. There's a beautiful parallel between the flesh and the spirit. When we fast in the flesh, we go through a natural autophagy. When we fast, our spirit man has the opportunity to be regenerated in a way that pleases God and draws us closer to him. Thanks for listening today and joining this week's devotion. God bless you. Go with him.